Uh, let's see what happens tomorrow, because I think it's, it's too early to say what's in that proposal. We haven't seen it, and so I'm, uh, I, I don't want to offer commentary on something that I haven't seen yet. But certainly, uh, the reports we're hearing um, uh, are concerning, to put it mildly. Well, well, there's one consistent element which could be construed as positive. Throughout the Tory leadership campaign, Boris ruled out a time limit. In the last few days, the DUP shifted ground on that. What we have sight of for the first time is beyond the transition period, a four-year time limit. The argument being that will give enough time for a new UK-EU trade deal to be done. On the question of a four-year time limit, leaving aside the detail, what's your attitude to that? But you look, I mean, we've always said that if a backstop ever gets triggered uh, because it's needed in the absence of another political solution that works, then it is, it was always supposed to be temporary uh, unless and until we can get something more permanent agreed uh, by all sides. I mean, that is what the backstop uh, was meant to be about, an insurance mechanism, a fallback position uh, until uh, a permanent deal can be put in place. Um, but we always rejected the concept of a time limit on the backstop uh, unless you can actually answer the question as to what happens at the end of that time limit. Then it's not a backstop at all. Uh, it, it's a simply a del delaying of the inevitable. Um, so, you know, the, the, uh, the rumour mill this evening is suggesting that there would be a four-year time limit and then uh, a choice to be made uh, by Northern Ireland at the end of that period. But again, that's all speculation. Um, uh, but I mean, our position has been very clear on a time-limited backstop. Uh, if it's time-limited, and if you can't answer the question what happens at the end of that time period, then it's not a backstop at all.